start everything. I will start recording. All right. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so welcome everyone uh, on our event and uh, webinar teaching and learning to code online today and tomorrow. First of all, I would like to say that uh, today we have really great speakers and I would like to welcome uh, Loranda Denny, the member of SAP Board of Directors and CEO of Alamira Education and Ilya Bimetov, uh, Chief Product Officer of Alamira Education. So Loran, I will now hand over to you and uh, you can take care of this and uh, welcome again and enjoy this webinar today. All right, Bojana, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, good morning and good, good afternoon to everyone. And thank you very much for joining us today. Um, let's uh, move the slide, please. I'm excited to spend the next 45 minutes with you. And uh, as we put together some, uh, and actually several presentation and demos that will help you uh, to get some insights about how SIT Alimera helps education institutions like yours with active learning and better teaching. My name is Laurent De Denis, and I'm the CEO of SIT Alimira. And together with my colleague, Ilya and Boyana, we are going to tell you more about how teaching and learning to code using modern technology. So let me start by sharing with you what an interesting time we live in. What slide? Andre, can you move the slide, please? And one more, thank you. Well, last year has exposed many inequalities with respect to access to tertiary education and employment opportunities. Education requires investment as countries with higher skills, proficiency, and see, actually see greater GDP returns. In fact, it's all about digital transformation. It's about experience, it's about trust, it's about augmentation and transformation. Experience is about being smart, individualized education, and make education more fun. It's about the growing importance of the focus on students, but also on all users. Trust is about the strengths, the reliability and veracity of data management in education, and use of data in order to improve education. Augmentation is about analytics and content being available everywhere. It's about extending tools and making the education journey more real and truly interactive. Finally, transformation is about new business model and ecosystem. It's about deep and innovative changes on how in institutions like yours can actually operate. And digital transformation is all about technology. If you read research articles from leading firms like Forrester, Gardner, or IDC, You'll see a long list of technology impacting education today. Machine intelligence, new display, nudge tech, visualization, virtual reality, and collaboration technologies. For instance, what can you do with machine intelligence? Well, with machine intelligence, you can actually improve natural language processing, chatbots interacting with students, personalized case study, Learning provides early, <coughs> I'm sorry, provide early warning analysis, save time for the faculty with automatic attendance, automatic grading, and adaptive assessment, and actually do more with adaptive learning and virtual reality simulation. In fact, the studies of 200 million students in higher education has been disrupted by COVID-19, and SIT Alimira is building a platform addressing some of the key challenging that emerged in the past 18 months. Let's move forward, please. SIT Alimira is a digital education ecosystem offering an integrating platform for learning, education, and science management for business and higher education. Our goal is educating people online faster and more efficiently, and intelligently simplifying, automating, and optimizing all education research and learning process. Alimira has got three key components. Can you move the slide, please? Learning management to help students learn better and professor to teach better. Education management with XRP and XRM used to manage operation in a more efficient and effective way. And science management to manage science and research events and conference and improve researchers' collaboration. Early adopter of our technology 
already experience benefits of using Alimira. And today, together with Ilya and Boyana, we hope we can actually show you some of the benefits that we highlight and some of the benefits that we allow uh, organization to, uh, to enjoy. Can you please move, please? So to those three different um, components within SIT Alimira, uh, today we are actually going to focus on the top part, the learning part, and more specifically on the practicum part, which is uh, the component you see in the middle uh, targeted at institutional actions. Let's move forward, please. All right. SIT Alimira enables engaging and dynamic content for students and faculty through integrated technology, including personalized online tutoring tools, comprehension and retention resources, collaboration platform, and adaptive learning experience designed to advance the overall online solution. And today, as we focus on uh, coding school and, and the um, uh, ecosystem um, helping students to code online, uh, we will actually uh, try to go through the main challenges of these goals. Um, they are of two sorts, cost and time to start with, and engagement. Cost and time because it requires um, extensive investment to move online, right? To provide a comprehensive assistance, to automate content creation, and to automate assessment. And we'll also cover how we can actually improve engagement by emphasizing on exercise and practice, collaboration, and gamification, right? So without further ado, uh, let me hand it over to my colleague, my colleague Ilya Bayetov. Can we please move the slide? That will actually cover the detail about virtual classroom and teaching programming and coding language. Thank you, Ilya, please. Thank you, Laurent, for the introduction. Uh, Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining. And in my presentation today, I will explain how Elimira Practicum uh, makes the process of teaching programming online uh, much more engaging and efficient for instructors and students alike. Next, please. Uh, so current technology um, allows to transform learning into a very engaging experience by using personalization, intelligent tutoring, interactive content, learning by doing, and many other techniques. Uh, however, most of the universities are in the very beginning of the digital transformation journey and do not use uh, the technology to its full potential. Uh, Essentially, the, uh, the entire transformation is uh, conducting lectures via Zoom and uh, sending or conducting multiple choice quizzes uh, online. Uh, and for most universities, it stops uh, there. But, and, and, and this is exactly the challenge Alimira Practicum and actually Alimira in general is addressing. In particular, Alimira Practicum provides an interactive environment for teaching programming skills uh, that allows uh, instructors to quickly create and update courses that involve writing code uh, and also provides students uh, with the environment to uh, to do interactive practical exercises. Um, Elamira's mission in general, Elamira is in Elamira in general is to use active learning paradigm to transform passive information consumption into high engagement knowledge discovery for each for each student and make the learning process much more efficient uh, for both instructors and students. Uh, and specifically, the Elimira Practica makes teaching code online, uh, makes teaching code uh, coding more engaging and efficient uh, by providing a project-based environment with uh, zero setup exercises and automatic grading. And next, please. Uh, Elimira Practicum, uh, provides students of uh, all sorts of educational uh, institutions like uh, you know, universities, colleges, or, and boot camps, which is also known as alternative credentials institution, institutions with uh, interactive tools uh, this, that students can use to write code and be automatically graded uh, uh, without any need to set up software. Uh, and they can create environments, deploy and run their codes and collaborate with other students 
uh, via chat and online video conference. Uh, so let me go over the, the main capabilities of Philomera Practicum to, to give you a, um, a picture, a view of what, what this uh, product can do for you. Uh, so let's start with learning by doing. Uh, you will actually learn, the students will learn how to write code, not just to listen. And uh, the principle here is that people learn better when they actually do something, right? When, when they go through the, um, through the exercises. And uh, Elementary Practicum provides an environment where students can uh, actively engage in, in, in doing exercises. Online coding environment, uh, a development environment that enables you to code, uh, um, to build code, run code, test code, and uh, in, in general, um, collaborate with other students. Uh, it's also, and of course, collaboration is very important. Uh, we provide an environment where students can collaborate with everybody in the cohort and with an instructor in a single workspace. Uh, course authoring and markdown. Uh, Markdown is, a, is an easy to use markup language for created formatted text using a plain text editor. And we use this text to create, uh, we use this, this format to create courses. And uh, it makes it much easier uh, than, um, than, for example, create all these pages in HTML. Uh, exercises and projects. Uh, our solution, uh, provides not just exercises, but also project, projects. So project-based learning has been on the rise. And uh, basically what it, what it is about is uh, instead of giving students uh, kind of short, unconnected exercises for, individ for learning individual kind of elements or skills, you uh, combine them all in a project where they can uh, uh, accomplish something in the end, right? And we, we, uh, Alimir Practicum provides environment that supports project-based learning. Um, individual group assignments. It's a set of materials which the group of students uh, have to complete together, again, as a project, and they do it to get together or individually, but uh, usually they have some kind of roles uh, and uh, the parts of the projects are distributed among the students and, and Alimir Practicum is a, environment supports uh, distributing the tasks among the students and, and tracking the progress. Instructor and peer review. Instructors can review each exercise. Uh, and uh, we also offer the capability for peer review, meaning that students will review each other work, each other's work. Uh, finally, chat and video. Uh, students can interact and collaborate with each other and with instructor on um, you know, chat uh, and also can set up, uh, quickly set up video conferences and, and do some sync up calls. Uh, and the last but not, but not the least, it's a, very importantly that we will uh, extend this uh, practicum paradigm to uh, not just coding, but to physics, math, and other STEM, STEM disciplines. Uh, essentially, uh, people will be able to study math and physics by doing practical exercises uh, right inside the uh, some sort of an integrated environment. Uh, and they will be able to uh, use the same techniques such as uh, collaboration, uh, gamification, and project management, and, and project-based learning to uh, to teach and learn uh, to study other subjects like math and physics. Next, please. And in the next few minutes, I would like to highlight uh, some of the differentiators uh, uh, of Elemira Practicum. And after that, we will we will do a demo. Uh, so first one is coding exercises integrated into LMS, right? Most LMS provide only static environments, like static material, uh, you know, lecture notes, uh, and uh, static learning content 
uh, does not really, cannot really teach you how to code, right? So watching uh, just uh, code snippets on the screen is not very effective. Uh, so we decided to implement interaction in, inside the LMS and uh, Elamira LMS has in integrated code learning solution, which is which is practically what we're talking about. Right? And so you don't need to, to use two different pieces of software to uh, to practice your coding skills. You can do it right inside the LMS. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. And um, we all know that uh, of online learning is considered uh, inferior to, to in-person learning because the level of engagement is lower uh, and uh, it's harder for the instructor to, uh, to be engaged with the audience. Uh, and we decided to address this challenge to solve this problem by maximizing the meaningful, meaningful uh, interaction between student and instructor, uh, even, even when, when it's done online and, and uh, using remote settings. Uh, this is done by enabling students to send help requests. Uh, also, they can edit the, the uh, code together collaboratively, student and instructor in a single workspace. And uh, it, uh, we also enable rapid manual assessment as soon as the automated test pass, meaning that student can uh, do the automated testing. And, and right after that, they can call an instructor and instructor will, uh, will do the final inspection manually. Next slide, please. Instructors' time is a is a limited resource, uh, and uh, actually, there is a lot of um, evidence. So there is a lot of uh, we are hearing a lot of uh, uh, I wouldn't say complaints, but a lot of feedback from universities that during COVID times the uh, the load has increased on instructors, and it, it's it's been very tough on on professors and uh, teaching assistants. So instructor's time is a limited resource again, and this is very critical because the challenge of most schools is how you can get a teacher who is useful for uh, a certain number of students as they would be in a classroom uh, and can freely move around and interact with students. And uh, imagine that students need to request help from the instructor, explain their problems to the, to the fellow students, uh, and how do we actually solve this in an online environment? Uh, and uh, one of the efficient ways to do it is using your peers. Uh, so instead of constantly using teachers as a resource, we can, uh, students can help each other. Uh, and our system automatically matches uh, who's in line, who's, who's already performed uh, you know, the given exercise and allows the students to send requests to chat or to help or to, the other, uh, to the other students in the cohort that has already that have already completed this and, and get help from them, uh, which saves a lot of time for the instructor. And also uh, uh, peer-based uh, teaching uh, have been proven to be a very effective technique, uh, not, for, not only for uh, students who learn, who request help, but also for the students who provide the help. Next slide, please. Finally, the, uh, the problem, of, uh, one last slide before the demo, uh, is that uh, authoring exercises is, is not very uh, developer friendly currently and, uh, and takes a lot of time. Uh, uh, so the authoring content in the LMS is quite different from uh, modern authoring practices of uh, professional developers and instructors. Uh, and instructors may need to copy and paste code between their online environments and local machine to run and debug tests. And we provide a much better ability to, to, uh, to author content within the LMS uh, uh, for, for providing a better experience. Uh, in our solution, we completely revise how to create a course. We have a code-centric authoring experience that's as close as possible to the industry, industry practices. It's not, a text, it's, it's a code. So we implemented this solution where you can write your instruction as a code. 
uh, and you don't need to use multiple solutions to write uh, you know, code and text and, and, and switch between them. Uh, as we can see on the screenshot, you can write instructions in one file, write a code in the second file, write how to test in, the, in, in another file, and this is what uh, provides the best value. You, you, just, you just use one single tool. Uh, and uh, another thing, we use Git, uh, which is this, uh, which is an industry standard uh, source control system. Uh, and any instructor can take advantage of, uh, of the tools that are familiar uh, to them to uh, test, compile, and, and synchronize the code. Uh, and as a part of this presentation, uh, let us uh, do a demo of Elamira Practicum. So let's, let's go to the demo, please. During the demo, I'll switch between user interfaces of different users, giving you a more complete overview. Let's start with an instructor user interface. Here you can see the screen where the instructor can create new courses using markdowns. The instructor has the option to either create the course from scratch, or alternatively, they can download an existing course from the Git repository. Once the course is created, the instructor can manage cohorts, groups of students who pass the specific course. So here you can see we have five total cohorts. Three of them are in progress and two are upcoming. Let's go ahead and create a new cohort to see what the process is like. We click on this button where we can then insert general information, add students to the cohort, and then set different communication settings, grading settings, and so on. You can now see the new upcoming cohort appeared at the bottom of the screen. When a new cohort starts, Alamir Practicum automatically creates a set of channels for the students in this cohort, immediately includes them in these channels for all communication. It also automatically sends a welcome message from the instructor into the chat. Here, you can see a message from the instructor in the random channel, as well as replies from students. Now let's go ahead and switch to a student view. As the student, I can now see a list of available courses. I can read the information about the course. I can see the authors, and then I can even start the course. On the next screen, we can see the first unit of the course. It provides some basic information about Python and allows me, the student, to read the theoretical part. And at the end, I can go straight to the exercise and begin. I can click on this button where I can then see an example of a simple problem, which will guide me through the exercise one step at a time. Each step explains what I should do. Here, I can read the first step and add the code and run a test. I see that they pass and I continue to read the instructions for the second step. I once again, Add code, run the automated test, and I see that it too passes. I go to the final step where I write more code again. This exercise is complete. And now I can continue to the next unit in the course. I can click continue to the course, where here I can see the second unit, which is more complex. Once again, I read the theoretical part, scrolling all the way through until the end, where I can see access to another exercise. This exercise, as mentioned, is a bit more complex. I click on the button, and since it is more complex, it does not guide me step-by-step step through what I should do. Instead, it has some generic description of what's expected from me, from which I can then write the code. So I proceed by writing the code and run my tests. You can see that part of the test passes, but that three tests failed. Let's assume that I don't understand why they failed so that we can look at what we should do in order to fix it. In this case, I can request for help. And here we have two options. I can either request help from the instructor or from students who have already completed the exercise. Let's first try to request help from the instructor. I click on the button where I can now request help explaining my problem by submitting a comment. I submit the comment, the instructor sees my request. They ask for permission to start a video chat. I can accept and we can quickly chat live. The instructor gets access to my environments. He can see it, explain how to fix it and send me a message 
telling me what's wrong. Let's now take a look to see what this is from the instructor's point of view. Here I have my dashboard where I can see the student's progress. Here, there's a section with a list of help requests and chats. As an example, I can see a request from John Doe. I can review his request, which enables me to see his code and comment, and I can also see that the student is online. This allows me to request a video chat with the student so I can talk with them directly. I can explain what's wrong, comment on their request, and submit a reply to their comment. Now let's go back to our John Doe interface, where he has the original code with some failed tests. Again, he doesn't understand how to fix it and wants to request for help. This time, he decides to request help from other students. He posts a comment with a tag, student help request. We can see that two students joined the workspace and it appears that Stacy knows what is wrong and she's willing to help. So she then asks for permission to edit the code. I allow her to make the changes. Stacy fixes my code and sends a message explaining what I did wrong. Now let's see what it looks like from Stacy's point of view. She has the chat and then in this chat, a new message appears from John Doe. Stacy sees the message with, the, with John's comment along with automatically attached error description from his exercise. She wants to help John, so she enters John's workspace. Here, she can request editing rights. John then grants her permission, where she can fix the code and send a message explaining the root of the problem. Other students can then see the reply and also vote for it. Here now, her comment has two votes. Now let's go back to the instructor view. The instructor can see that John Doe's issue is solved and then sees a mention of him in a comment from another student who requests help from the fellow student. He also sees that there is a reply from Jackie. Jackie explains how to fix his problem and the instructor can read her reply. And if this reply is correct, can mark it as accepted. After that, this request disappears from the instructor's list. Now, as the instructor, I have only one more request from Sergey left in my list. It has a red bar mark indicating that the student is offline. So I decide to not help him immediately and go to the next. Here, I can then access the section to assess of my dashboard. In general, students can complete the exercises and check them with the automated tests. But there is also an option to manually review exercises that pass all automated checks by the instructor. So here in this list, instructors can see submissions for the check from Alice Cooper and can then review her code. The instructor then reviews it and finds that there are some issues with the code. They mark the lines and submit comments explaining what should be corrected. Now there are two options. The instructor can either accept the exercise providing feedback or send it back for reworks. Now let's switch to Alice's interface. In her interface, she sees a message from the instructor, seeing that he has reviewed her exercise and that some rework is needed. She clicks on the notification. She opens her exercise with comments from the instructor. She fixes the code, leaves a comment to the instructor, and then submits the exercise once more for review. The instructor can then once more see the submission from the student from the interface. This time it is labeled with the reworked mark, this symbol here. The instructor can scroll down their interface, navigating to the third section, which shows the list of active cohorts. He can open the course, for example, the first one, and see the progress of each student. From here, the instructor can click on a student, contacting students individually, for example, to contact and encourage students that are lagging behind or to encourage those to continue who are ahead. That's it from my side. Thank you for watching the demo. Hope that this has been helpful. Thank you, Alicia. Okay, and uh, I, I would like to, to give you a summary of LMR practicum in the end. Uh, so now that we, we've seen the live demo, uh, I would like once again to emphasize the most important uh, features of uh, LMR practicum. Uh, it's an online coding education. 
uh, tool, integrated environment. It's integrated into Elamira uh, LMS or can be integrated with any third party LMS. So you don't have to actually throw away your LMS. Uh, you can use Elamira practicum side by side. Uh, it's a very easy code centric uh, markdown authoring experience. Uh, we have chat and videos for cohorts. Uh, we use Git uh, for uh, storing code and, uh, and versioning the, the uh, exercises and, and solutions that students provide. Uh, we save a lot of time, uh, a lot of instructor's time with uh, enabling peer-to-peer -peer reviews and help. Uh, we allow collaborative editing. Uh, for students and instructors in a single works, works, workspace. Uh, we allow for rapid manual assessment from, from the instructor. Uh, we uh, provide zero setup exercises and we provide auto grading, which saves a lot of time, a lot of time for uh, teaching assistants. Uh, and uh, this is the end of my section. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Leah. Thank you all around. So I would like to invite all of you to ask some questions. We already have two of them. So feel free to raise your hand or to send your questions to the Q&A feature um, on Zoom. Uh, so I would like now just to read questions that we, uh, that we already got. Uh, so is the practicum viable in corporate setting or is it better to use it for universities? Whoever wants to answer. Right, I think, Ilya, why don't you take this first question, please? Can you repeat the question, my connection? Can I go yes, for sure. A so is the practicum viable in a corporate setting or is it better to use it for universities? Uh, primarily, uh, it's intended for universities and what's called uh, boot camps or alternative credentials. And this is, I think, how it can be useful in a corporate environment. Uh, a lot of corporations uh, provide uh, you know, kind of continuous education uh, for their employees. They teach uh, uh, programming skills to their employees. Uh, one particular use of practicum, uh, one particular potential use of practicum for corporate, uh, for corporate customers could be uh, when you have your partners or employees or, uh, like I said, partners, right, who uh, create solutions based on your products, they need to write code that integrates with your product, uh, right? And that's again, how practicum can be used. So you can uh, create a practical courses that teach them how to build integration code. And that's uh, where practicum can be very useful. Maybe actually you can just continue because we uh, got from Duncan, thank you Duncan for your question. How active are students in responding to other students' questions about coding? And what is the incentive for students to help others? The incentive is, I think is up to, I'm sorry. <coughs> I think how to define incentive is up to the instructor, which is provide the, the capability, but in general, I think it's the, the benefit is that students help each other. It's, a, it's just a higher engagement. And uh, also, like I said, it's been proven by many studies that peer-to-peer uh, -peer feedback uh, allows uh, both the students who's getting the feedback and, and who providing the feedback to just learn better. So the best way to learn something is to actually to teach it. Uh, but yeah, instructors, uh, instructors oh, are welcome to incentivize their students to do that. Go ahead. No, no, I, <clears throat> thank you, Ilya. I wanted to add that it's also how um, you provide the environment to the student to allow this interaction and, and this uh, interactivity um, together with other students. I mean, if you broadcast your lex lecture with Zoom and, and everything you do is very static, then basically it gives you less uh, opportunity or it gives less incentive by itself for, for the student to interact. And I think as you get the um, instructor to the students uh, into the, the, the boot camps and, and the exercise itself, and uh, also help uh, the instructor to manage its time uh, based on the number of students on how you can actually help and engage with each of these students, then you, you create this interactivity and this, uh, this engagement in, in a lot easier fashion. 
Um, and uh, another question as well from Duncan is that uh, the LMR LMS teams focus on coding and technology. So can it be used in non-tech fields? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> the LMS is a standard um, uh, platform that can actually be used both by academic user and by business user. Uh, it can be used uh, to teach and educate uh, within the tech sector, but it can also be used for uh, any uh, sector in general. And it can be used as a standard learning management system, uh, hopefully with better engagement. Okay, thank you. Uh, what criteria should I look at to choose the right practicum? Ilya, would you like to take uh, this one? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, whoever asked this question, can you please clarify what do you mean by right, right practicum? Well, I guess it's the yeah. I guess I guess that uh, it was like uh, what what should they look like uh, in terms of um, benefits for their companies, universities, and uh, in terms of collaboration. So, as you already mentioned, uh, we have like. Um, uh, LMS system Alimira, that Alimira provides and that LMS system actually is uh, providing something different, I would say, and uh, provide something different from uh, having some static learning material to students. So is this something in something that it's really important to uh, have when you're looking for the practicum? Or you would say that maybe something else because we have like um, on your presentation for highlights. So what would you say that maybe is the most important thing to look if you are looking for another LMS system? Uh, well, practicum can be used with, with other, in conjunction with other, with other LMS systems, right? And uh, uh, the, I think the important capabilities to look for in a, in a, in a practicum are just the, the uh, basically the number of exercises and how interactive uh, the system is, and also whether they whether the system uh, can lighten the, the the burden, the load on, on the instructors, right? So automating uh, automated grading, uh, you know, peer based uh, peer based teaching, uh, peer based feedback, and all all the all the basic capabilities that we we just described. Uh, okay, so I I don't know if it answers the question, but uh, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Thank you, Ilya. Okay, do we have more questions maybe? Okay, that's it. So I would just like to invite you just to wrap up uh, quickly. Um, do you have anything else just uh, to wrap up this conversation? Uh, anyhow, we will have more events and more webinars. So please follow up uh, on uh, alimira.com. You will see uh, more events coming up uh, about um, our practicum and we will have a lot of uh, news uh, in, the, in the following uh, weeks. Uh, so Laurent, Ilya, do we have anything to wrap up this conversation? Yes, thank you very much, Boyana. So uh, first, uh, thank you very much for, for joining. Please uh, visit Alimira website and, and you know have a look at some of the other events and activities that we're running on a regular basis. Um, Alimira is focused on learning, education, and science. And if you have any question about the platform um, we, we are offering and the solution, we're providing um, uh, higher education research institution, universities, and businesses, please feel free to contact us um, directly at uh, team-pm at alimira.com. And uh, uh, you know, we'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you again for joining us today and spending the last 45 minutes with us. Uh, we hope you had an enjoyable and interactive uh, session with us. And Boyana, Ilya, Alicia, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you, Lauren, Alicia. So as you already saw, please check uh, our website and follow us on our social media channels for more details. If you want to request a demo, you got the email. So uh, I hope to see you again for the next webinar. Thank you so much. Bye.